and other members of the National of the State House of Assembly, President, Elder Statesman Chief Emmanuel Wyoming, His Royal Majesty the Eze of Ego Kingdom of Choroba, the sixth Eze Uche Ego Poly, the Imo State Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Macron Idemi, the good people of Imo State, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you the very warm greetings and felicitations of Mr. President on this landmark occasion of the commissioning of the three kilometer long the Tiger Road. This road covers more than 10 streets, including the Dick Tiger Street, and its commissioning in record time ends the misery of the hitherto flood-prone flood -prone areas, which has led to the near desolation of this area. Because of the flooding problems that have been here, now already with the rehabilitation of this road, I'm told that the real estate value of this area is now on the rise. The before and after story of this restoration as told by the grateful residents who you just listened to, is particularly heartwarming. And it tells you the value of good and purposeful government. As the governor has said, we have already begun to see what it means to have an APC government. And I'm sure that in the coming months and years, we will see even more dramatic developments in this great state. Only a few weeks ago, the president commissioned two major road projects, the World Bank to Federal Secretariat Road and the Azomta to General Hospital to Portacot Road. The president had barely finished that commissioning when the governor insisted that we must commission the Dick Tiger Road and the Dick Tiger Street. The huge infrastructural developments taking place here in Imo State must be commended. And so must the governor's hard work and forward-looking approach. This aligns with Mr. President's own belief that the building of roads, rail, power, and digital technology and other infrastructural assets must be the first priority for economic development. And in this, we have no choice. Africa's largest economy can only provide opportunities for its people and for its huge population if it runs on modern infrastructure. Congratulations, Mr. Doctor. Although we're here to celebrate building and builders, we're also confronted with the sector of destruction and calamity paradox of positive construction and wanton destruction. Early yesterday morning, this quiet and peaceful city of Uwari had its peace and tranquility shattered by heavily armed hoodlums who blasted open the doors of the correctional facility on Ukigwira, facilitating the escape of well over a thousand inmates, many of whom were dangerous criminals, and they also attacked the police headquarters at Shell Camp, burning several vehicles and even attempting to overtake the police armory, if not for the effective resistance of the police. An attack on the critical institutions of law enforcement, police stations and prisons, is an attack on the safety, security, and well-being of the citizens it is not merely an attack on law and order. It is a mindless attack on the people and the way of life of the people. When you attack police stations and free dangerous criminals, you put women, men, children, and their possessions and livelihoods at risk. Whatever the motives of the perpetrators, the action is egregious and atrocious in the extreme. And all men, all men and women of goodwill 
must openly condemn this assault on the way of life of the good people of the state. Perhaps more than any other part of the country, this region has borne witness to the terrible cost in lives, liberty, and progress that is exacted by conflict. It is in this beautiful land that our country learned an enduring lesson in the futility of violence. But there are those who believe that to resolve issues and conflicts other than by violence is cowardice. If the voice of their hatred prevails, we will experience the terrible and fruitless loss of life that violence begets. Our system is not perfect, and we can only seek to perfect it. Indeed, no earthly system is perfect. But what democracy and the institutions of democratic governance provide are channels, however imperfect, for seeking redress for injury, for peacefully addressing the problems that ail us. There are many who are working tirelessly every day to improve our system, to build it up and to enhance it. We must therefore reject the agents of anarchy that seek to weaponize the frustration and discontent of young people for their own profit. The path of violence can only lead to disaster that consumes everyone and leads to the desolation of our communities. It is easy to take peace for granted, but we need not learn the value of peace through the horrible crucible of war. Anyone who perpetrates violence does not represent the progressive-mindedness of the good people of this state and this region. And I call on all of us to come together to resist any attempts to turn the progress and peace that this zone is set to experience to conflict and disruption. The security in this city and the state has since yesterday been further enhanced and we are set to strengthen security capacity even more here. The search for the escaped inmates of the correctional facility has begun in earnest. And I want to commend the governor of the state for his calm, measured, but firm handling of the security situation in the state. The federal government stands with you and the great people of Imo State at this very crucial time. Your Excellency, Honorable Ministers, Senior Government Officials, and traditional rulers present, it is now my very special pleasure and honor to officially commission the new re-engineered, rebuilt, refurbished Dick Tiger Road for the benefit of the residents and businesses in this area and all the good people of the state and to the glory of the Almighty God. Thank you.